Hey guys and welcome to a new tutorial. This time I will explain you the most parts of the attachment system in our character tool. Let's break down quickly what we are going to cover in this tutorial. The character pipeline uses an attachment system to customize the appearance of the character model in a variety of ways. In general this allows you to choose different skins and accessories in order to create a unique look. We will go through a few of the attachment options and their types. Types which are not mentioned in this video will be covered in an upcoming ones. For this though, we will cover only skin and joint attachments. This tutorial is hooked on the last one we did on creating animated characters for CryEngine. So you need to have a character with animations and already a generated character definition file if you want to follow along. Ok, and then we start with skins. Let's open the CDF by double clicking it and start with the skin attachments. With skin attachments, entire body parts such as heads, hands and upper and lower body parts can be replaced. Those parts are animated and deformed by the base skeleton as long as they are skinned to the skeleton correctly. As you can see, Jimmy, the character from the previous tutorial had a jacket. I've deleted that skin attachment so we can add it again now. Click here to add a new attachment. First thing we should do is give the attachment a name. In this case, it's a jacket, so we call it jacket. In the type section, we need to select, well, you guessed it, skin attachment. In geometry, we should choose the skin that is missing by order. If you observe here, we are missing skin six because our order is, well, skin one, skin two, skin three, and so on. If we follow the order, we should be able to see that skin 6 is missing. Material will be automatically chosen as the skeleton material. This is already a material assigned to the skeleton. The one you generated while you imported the character. That means the tabs over here and here are empty. Because you can use them to overwrite your existing material which is already assigned to the skeleton. View Distance Multiplier lets you, well, it multiplies the view distance you set to your skin. So if your view distance is 10 meters, you multiply it with the value you enter. Choosing a skinning method is quite useful, for example. If you have a simple skin attachment, you can leave it at the vertex shader method. But if your skin has morphs like facial animations and blend shapes, you will need to change the method to rather a complex one like CPU. Hidden lets you define the current state of an attachment, which you can change in Visual Scripting System. The last one is pretty self-explanatory. And now we have our attachment. And before I go to the next part, here's the types we will not cover in this video and the reasons why. Face directly attaching to a face on a mesh. We are not going to use that. This technique is quite outdated and is really expensive and I would not recommend using it for you at home. Proxy, attach proxies to be used for attachment collision or rectal physics. This one I've already explained in my mini tutorial on the rectal component. And p and V-Cloth is something we are going to cover in another tutorial within this series. Okay, now we got that out of the way, the second one is joints. Joint attachments provide a socket in which you can optionally place an object. Sockets are linked to a joint and move with the joint with the skeleton when the skeleton is animated. We will do just that. I have a sword CGF in my assets. Let's add a new attachment and set it to a joint attachment. Choose our sword as the geometry. Now we need to choose a joint we can attach to an object to. Click on the joint selection and let's look for the left hand attachment. Ok, done. We can either store the position of the attachment relative to the character or to the joint. Change it to the joint. And if you want to reposition your object, which you definitely will, you can do that in the viewport right away. Just as usual as you would do it in a level editor. By either using 1, 2, 3 as your gizmos or using the buttons up here. Position your object where you want it to be with the correct rotation. I want the object to be in Jimmy's left hand for example. And you're done. We have a swing animation here to see how it looks. Cool, 
Let's let's add another sword on his back. Add another attachment the same way we did before, but rather than using left hand joint, we should choose the neck twist 01. Why? Well, to answer that question, we need to see the skeleton first and the names of the joints. Click the display options over here and hover to the skeleton tab. Click on the joint and the joint names checkbox. We are able to see the skeleton now and we should also able to read each one of the names of the joints. I'm assuming if we attach a sword on his back, the neck twist joint will behave the most correct way for a sword in a physical regard. That's why I'm attaching it on it. Position the sword on his back and play the animation. Looks cool, but not enough. We could simulate the sword so it behaves like an actual sword on his back and swings with the movement as a simulation method, which is an amazing topic and quite a big one. So buckle up, listen carefully. Let's use a simulation type. We go for pendulum cone this time. It has the most important values that will teach you the overall behavior of our simulations. One of the most important parts of this is to turn on the debug setup so we can actually see our cone. Always turn it on or you will be digging in the dark. We don't want that, right? I will go through each and one of the settings here and explain what I am doing. Most of it is actually self-explaining, but I will definitely explain the most stuff and also show the most stuff. So don't worry, it's fun as hell. Let's go. Simulation FPS should be 10 FPS, that's okay. Add up if you need more, but remember that if you do, it also comes with a performance cost. As you'll see, 10 to 20 FPS is just fine and looks really smooth. The simulation axis should be the same direction you want your object to move to. In this case, we need to set the Z axis and the Y axis to 0.1 and 0.3. Mass should be relative to the mass of the object, so our sword would weigh around 2 to 3 kg. Gravity should be the default gravity. We definitely could increase the damping in our example. So our sword won't dangle left and right with some crazy motion. I would recommend using a value of 5 to get some realistic damping. Joint spring restricts the movement of an object like a spring would. In the respective direction of the spring. Imagine a spring being positioned on his back and as soon as the sword hits his back, it will bounce back to the original simulation axis. We need that. Spring target moves the spring target in vector 2 dimensions, y and x axis. So here we need to find the correct direction and position of our spring relative close to the back. Restricted to 6.37 and 1.6. You can see the spring with this white little helper over here. Also we should limit the cone angle to a realistic degree. You can see the visual change of the debug setup. For me, 45 degrees is perfectly fine. Hinge rotation lets you simulate a hinge within the cone and change its rotation. We don't need that for now. Pivot offset does exactly what the name suggests. Pretty simple. I mean, most of the settings you have here explain themselves pretty well. The pivot offset in this example is something we should use. As you can see, our sword is currently attached at his pivot on the top. Well, you would usually snap the sword somewhere at the start of the blade, right? So we need to move the pivot just a bit down, let's say minus 0.2 and then also reposition the sword back again. Capsules, projection type and blend control is something that we will go through in another tutorial. For now, I want to keep it a bit simple and give you an understanding of all the different attachment types and what they do. Also, the pendulum cone gives you the most options and explains a lot of the simulation behavior in the character tool. So you will find yourself really comfortable if you narrow that down and try to do other simulations like pendulum ellipsoid and pendulum hinge. That's why I explained the basics to you, but hard edge cases is something we will cover later on in another tutorial. And what's left is physical rays. Allows the object to be hit by ray casts by default. 
Physicalized collision. This option allows other objects in the world to interact with this simulation. A physical ball will be able to hit our sword, for example. To have a small breakdown for the world of physics in CryEngine and the character. We are having a simpler physics simulations here in the attachments and they are not interacting with the physical world in our level. It's not the part of the physics engine, it's part of cry animation. Why you might ask? Well, because it will be way heavier to have those simulations in the physics engine. A lot heavier. The physics in a cry animation do not care about the physics engine. To sum up, the simulations in a character tool and your character attachments are independent. So, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next tutorial in that series of character tool we will cover some more complex logic and we'll cover up the modifiers. So keep your eyes out and if you have some feedback or questions let us know on our official social media channels linked in the description below. Thank you for watching, bye bye.